So what we're going to be doing today and some, on Wednesday is special cuts. And basically these are cuts that we can use to create special effects. But all you really need to do it is some good timing. There's not like an effect, right? It's just all about timing and, and position. So the first special cut we'll go over, we're going to go over four different types of special cuts today. The first one we're going to do is a whip cut. Alright. A whip cut, when you're in pre-production, on your screenplay, just use the transitions, right? So in your screenplay, use a transition, so that would end up on the far right side of the page, in all caps, and I would just put whip cut two, and then that basically tells you that we're whip cutting to whatever scene occurs next. Okay, you know you want to whip cut in your, pre, in your screenplay. When you're storyboarding, it's two shots, right? So our first shot, second shot, and you can whip cut between any kinds of shots. You can go from a long shot to a medium. You can go from a medium to a close up. The framing doesn't matter. Framing doesn't matter. What you're going to do, in my example, I have kind of a medium shot of Morgan at the computer. All right, there's a the little keyboard. This is a medium shot. And the second shot is the fish tank. And here's my fish in the fish tank I used to have, and that's a close-up. And what I'll do when I'm storyboarding is I want to remember, okay, I said I want to whip cut in my screenplay, so I'm going to whip out, whip out of this shot, and I'm going to whip in to the next shot. You notice my arrows are both pointing right, right? I'm going to whip out, I'm going to point at my subject, I'm going to whip right, which means I'm leaving her. And in my second shot, I need to whip right again, but I need to arrive at the fish. Okay, so let me show you guys what this is going to look like raw footage-wise, so you get a little bit of an idea of what I'm talking about. Here we go. So here's Morgan. In action. I wonder what the fish are up to. And at the end, I whip right out, right? So in production, right, it's a hard, fast pan, and a whip. My goal is to get as much blur in that shot as I can. Use your wrists to pan. Usually we don't like to use our wrists because they're too shaky, but for this we need that speed. A hard, fast 90 degrees, as fast as you can. You can't do it on a tripod, it's too slow. It won't work. Yeah, wear your, wear your neck strap, whip hard and fast. Okay, my goal is to create as much blur as possible in that whip out of Morgan. In action. I wonder what the fish are up to. Whack. All right, and then my second shot, my fish, I kind of frame them up, get ready to go, set up over on the left, and then call action and whip in to the fish. Okay, so that's my production, right? A hard fast pan on the out of shot one and a hard fast pan on the in of shot two. Okay? When you're in pre post production, the key is to set the out of shot one, so the out of one in the blurriest moment. Blurriest frame. Right? So let's go and set some ins and outs. Shot one. Where are you, Morgan? In, in action. There's my in. That's easy. I wonder what the fish are up to. Now for the out, I gotta get real specific. I gotta go frame by frame. I really only have about three frames of blur. One, two, three. After that, it gets a little unblurry. So I need to find the blurriest one. I think this is my blurriest moment. So I'm gonna set my out right there in that blurriest moment. Drop that on my timeline. Zoom in. All right, shot two. Fish. Where are you? It's framing. Okay, here we go. Okay, shot two. The in of shot two. The in of two at the blurriest frame. Okay. So let's find that blur. Use your arrow keys. Get real, real specific. There it is. Set my in. There's the fish tank, set the out. The out's not as a crucial moment. The, the, out, the in of shot two is a crucial moment. So now we get this. 
wonder what the fish are up to. Right? And it looks like we appear to just turn and we've arrived at this new location. Right? It's a single, it, it blends, it blends into a single action. Right? You could use this to jump time, space, distance, whatever, right? I wonder what's going on in Tokyo. Whack, you're in Tokyo. I wonder what it was like with my parents in high school. And you're there. I will gosh man, this morning was a tough morning. Whack. And then you're you're you know, your middle sister's jumping on your bed, punching you in the head or whatever, right? So it can be really, really fast transitions. Usually if you go into flashbacks if you want. Um, you can use it for a lot of different purposes. And I've seen some people even do it with tilts. Right? So I'm on Morgan, one of the fish up to you, I can tilt up really hard and then start on the ground and then come up to the fish. Right? Because you've got to go the same directions both times. That's why you've got to make sure you use your storyboards correctly. Right? I'm whipping out to the right, I'm whipping in from the right. Right? The way people mess this up is they'll, they'll whip out right and then they think, well I was out of this shot right, so I need to come back. No, right? That's right and left. That's not going to work. Um, so that's a production screw up, and then the post production screw up is another one, right? If I just add three frames to this, three teensy tiny, two teensy tiny frames to this, the effect will be broken, right? What the fish are up to? I mean, it doesn't it doesn't work quite as well, or like some people they'll they'll make it really bad, right? Like this, this is gonna look really bad, right? That doesn't work yeah. anymore, okay? Three frames one way, two frames the other way, it'll make a huge difference as to what's going on. So you've got to be real specific with your outs and ins to make it to make it work. Right? To make it look like it's a continuous, continuous pan. Fast too. Another one is people pan not gonna work, right? Yeah. Turn it. Don't don't like pan it, right? Turn that camera. Alright? And wear your neck strap. Alright, so that's a whip cut, pretty simple. Like Alright, next one. Next one is a wipe cut, right? So in your screenplay, you just say whip cut two, and then the next one be like the fish, right? So the next one is a wipe cut. Same thing in your screenplays. You would just say at the end of the scene, right? You could say wipe cut two, and then you start your new scene heading. So for example, I would be interior green screen room, wipe cut two, exterior house five quad, is what we're gonna do right here. Storyboard. When you're boarded out, again, it's two shots. The two shots don't have to have anything in common. They can be completely different framings and whatever. Um, so I've got mine of the tripod in the green room, and then out there, house five quad. There it is. That's house five. This is the bench and everything, right? So these are this is kind of a medium. This is a long, extreme long shot. And what I'll do here in a wipe cut is we're going to have someone walk in front of the lens to obscure the view. So what I like to do is I draw just kind of a big blob representing my person and they're going to wipe, this is a wipe out, and then over here, same side, this is a wipe in, okay? Because, here's what this looks like, show you so it'll make a little more sense, right? Here's my first shot of the camera. At the end of the shot, I have a character walk through, okay? And then, at the beginning of this shot, I have a character walk through, right? So, my big blob is basically representing that person. I need to make sure I have them go the same direction both times, right? It's not this way and then this way. It's, it's left to right, left to right both times, okay? In production, um, you can go handheld or tripod. For this, it doesn't matter. And you need to make sure that that person obscures the frame, like um, actor, blocks, whole frame. At this one moment, there's not very many of them, but if we go frame by frame, where are you buddy? Right at this moment here, there's nothing can be seen except for the shoulder or the hip or whatever of that actor. So you might put a little bit of zoom in the shot, right? So maybe tighten that zoom up a little bit. That'll make it easier for that person to block the whole frame. Also, heck, I have a walk so that they're basically two inches from the lens, right? Get them right up on that thing. Have a walk right on through. All right? So, let's do some post-production. So here is my first shot in the green room. Let's go back, set in here. The key is setting your out at the moment when the screen is completely obscured, okay? So post, 
the out of one is blocked, and then the in of two is blocked. Okay, so here's my out of one blocked. Let's drop that down. Zoom out a little bit on our timeline. Find shot two. There's my in of two right there, completely blocked. Set the in, roll it, blah, 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 blah. There's the out, perfect. Okay, put these together, and now what we have is the white cut, perfect. Right? It just looks like one person has walked through the scene, but we've changed our location, right? It looks like it's a continuous walking through, right? Jaws kind of invented this, where the guy's on the beach and he thinks he sees this fin out in the ocean, but all the passerbys on the beach are walking in front of the camera, and then it's the shot of the fin, and then it's the guy, and then it's a close-up of the guy, and then it's a medium shot of the guy, and then it's the fin, right? But it's not like a cut. It feels a little more continuous. It feels a little more realistic, all right? Um, so the thing again is you got to make sure that there's, the shot's completely obscured. If if your body only blocks you know this much of the shot and you can see the green room switch to the outside, it's not going to work. That doesn't work. And the other thing that will kill you in production is um, say the camera's right here, right? Some people they do this, they they come in and they stop, okay, cut, and then they stand here and they move and then they say okay, action, and then he walks out. But what happens then is it looks like that character goes dun, dun, instead of just walking completely through. Okay? So your person who walks through, make sure they just walk right on through that shot. Don't hesitate, don't pause, don't freeze in front of the camera. Just walk on through. Right? As long as you're blocking that camera completely, it'll work out just fine. Right? Now you could change locations like this and do this handheld. The one trick, if you want to do it, um, there's another trick you can do like this right here. This is a white cut here. This is from a music video from a couple years ago. Right? Where'd he go? Oh, he's following the girl that walked by, right? So this one you have to do on a tripod because the whole effect is built on the fact that the, the guy disappears, right? So you can have people, right? Um, if I did a shot of this quad like this, empty, walk through, cut. Now, go get eight people, sit them on that ledge, walk through, right? What will happen is as I walk through, all these people will magically appear, or you can do the inverse and have people magically disappear with your white cuts, okay? So that's kind of a cool effect that's pretty easy to do. These guys had a cool little thing, and I think he's following the girl around, it's funny. All right, all right, next one is right here. This is basically what they were doing in T-Shirt Wars. This is a pop cut. When you're screen playing this, you would basically just write what you need to happen, right? So if I was screen playing, this would be Mr. Ulf jumps in the hallway and levitates across the hallway. There's no specialty to it. Same thing when you're in your storyboard. It's one board because it's one shot. This is a long shot of me. And basically what's going to happen is I'm going to jump up, I'm going to levitate across the hallway, I'm going to land. So you're going to use your description a lot in, in pop cuts, right? So jump, levitate, land, using pops, pop cuts. Okay, there's not a whole lot of trick to it. So the trick with this is production. This is where, all, is where it all lies. Got to use a tripod. Tripod required. Okay. The other thing in production is push record only once. Push record one time and back away. Any tiny, tiny microscopic movement of the camera may ruin the effect. So we don't want to even be near it. So here's what we did here. I push record, I walk away. Here I go, I walk over, I jump in place. Take a tiny baby step forward, jump in place. Take a tiny step forward, jump in place, right? I'm making tiny changes to the scene. I'm making tiny changes, right? Like those guys, they would, they would um, pull a little bit and then they pull, or like the one, right, they take the shirts off the rack and then remember they slid forward, they, they slid forward, so they'd stand still, get that image. Then they take a half step forward, 
and they get that image. And they take a half stroke forward, and they get that image. So you wouldn't see them actually taking the step. We just see their positions moving. So let's do this. Let's set in. For my effect, what I need to do is I need to set the out right at that moment of the apex of the jump. So that's the first one. That one's easy. All right? Okay. Set the in, and we're going to work in tiny slices. Tiny slices. So that's your key for post is tiny. All right, I set my in. Now what I'm going to do with my arrow keys, I'm just going to push over, over, right? One, two, set the out. So I'm just getting three tiny frames, right? Look at how small that little slice is. Three frames, a tenth of a second. And it's kind of repetitive. So here we go. Let's find that apex. There it is. Set my in, over, over, out. Another tiny slice. So let's grab, oh, don't freeze on me, computer. Come on, you can do it. There we go. All right, in, over, over, out. In, over, over, out. We've got about two or three more, I think. In, over, over, out. I think this next one's the last one. Yeah. In, I'm just going to roll it because that's the end. Yeah. Here's my out. So now what I get is this. Right? So I, I levitate. I've never touched the ground. I levitate across the hallway. Okay? Because I'm, I'm only taking the tiny slices. And if, instead of taking those half steps, what if I had taken quarter steps? Right? And I had tinier slices. And I had 10 of them. That movement would become much more fluid. Right? Conversely, if I took a jump and then went like this and jumped, they went like this and jumped. It, would like, it wouldn't look good. It, would and it wouldn't feel realistic, right? So the more tiny slices you get, right, and these nice little three frames work well, if I start to work in like four, five, six frame hunks, the eye can start to catch what you're doing and it doesn't work as well. Okay? So tiny slices. Got to be on a tripod. If this is handheld, it's not going to work. If you, some people make the mistake of trying to push, stop, and start every single time. And just pushing that button on the camera might pan it enough, just the tiniest bit when that background shifts, the effect is broken as well. Okay, I've seen people do ones where you could just stand up and slide. I've seen people sit on their butts kind of like go-kart pose and they drift around the school, <laughs> right? Um, one, a guy laying on his stomach and then a girl would stand on his back and then, okay, now guy gets up and like slides a half an inch and she stands on his back. and slides half, So she surfed him, she surfed him around the school, which was kind of cool. Uh, jump down the entire amphitheater, right? Brrr, jump down the whole amphitheater, float down the amphitheater. I mean, you can do lots of crazy stuff with, with uh, pop cuts. You can make, not only people, right? I could make, I'm not going to edit it, but you could make objects move, right? If I were to edit out the portion where my hand comes in and all you would see is the, all you would see would be the trophy, the little statue moving, right? It's just all about those tiny, right? I go, set an in, over, over, set an out. Then jump forward a little bit, right? Yeah. In, set an out, right? In, over, over, set an out. Pull it down. Then again, set an in, over, over, set an out. So it's just kind of repetitive, but you can create some cool effects. You can animate objects, right? Make them come alive. So that's one type of pop cut. Actually, this is a motion pop cut. So pop cut um, motion, put that at the top, right? So pop cut motion. So that's how they slid around the room in their t-shirt war video. And the last one is a pop cut appear. So it's kind of like that's how they made this is how they make all the t-shirts appear on that rack at the end, right? Or like um, like a good neighbor state farm is there and then the agent appears. Right? So basically what you're doing for that. Here we go. So here, here I am. I'm going to say, I wish I had my little car right here. Right? So I set my in, I wish I had my car right there. And I point, set my out. So I guess I should do the whole thing. My bad. So for this one, again, just use your screenplay to say, I, uh, a car magically appears in Mr. Rolf's hand, right? Single board. This is a close up of my hand. Right? Like that. And then I'm going to draw the little, I'm a, the word, oh my gosh, I can't draw. That's a car. Um, and it's going to appear, right? Car appears. Okay? In production. Got to have a tripod. 
Tripod required. Actors need to freeze. So what happens here, I point, right? I wish there was a car right here. Like, like a good neighbor, right? Ann is right here. And then what happens is I have to freeze and hold my position while Ann comes and stands here. Or I hold my finger here while Morgan puts the car in my hand. So I set my in and out. This is the moment where I want that car to appear. Drag that down. Don't grab the part where they're putting the car in your hand, right? There's my new, another in. Oh, the car, right? And then when we roll it, it's, I wish I had a car right there. Oh, and it magically appears, right? So, and you add, you add a ding sound effect or something like that. And you can see that between the two shots, I did not do a great job of freezing, right? The more, the more still you are, the better the effect is going to look. I mean, if I really, really locked it in and held perfectly still, and the only thing that changes is that car appears, or conversely disappears, it looks really good. So your actors have to freeze, right? And then you resume acting, and now the car is here, and it works. Right? Again, we could do it the other way. We could have the car there and then disappear it. Or we could make people appear and disappear, right? And I sure wish Anne was here, right? And then she's here, and then um, and, and then the opposite would be, right? Oh, Anne, go away, and then I freeze, and then Anne walks out of the shot, and then I go, I think I should <laughs> or whatever. So you can make people appear to disappear. So the post-production on that is, is you're basically editing out, edit out um, the addition or removal. There's not a whole lot of tricks to that. Um, you might want to have your director like give a signal, right, a hand motion for when it's time to begin acting again if you've got two or more people in the scene. So like when to unfreeze. Because um, that can be one thing is like one person starts acting too soon or one person acts, starts acting a little late. And you always add, adding a sound effect makes it a look and sound a whole lot better than just kind of letting it happen. Try to add a sound effect to that, that addition or removal thing, right? So these are our four kind of specialty cuts that we've done. Um, our whip cut, pretty simple. You've got a wipe cut where you can change location. You've got a white cut where you can add or remove something. You've got the motion style of pop cut. And you've got an addition or a subtraction style or appearance style of pop cut. Now, in our note groups, I think, uh, let's see here. How many? One, two. Most groups have five people. I think there might only be one or two groups that only have four. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up, we're going to screenplay and storyboard five shots today, five scenes. Um, what we're going to do is you're going to have one whip cut, you're going to have uh, one wipe where you change locations, like the green room to house five, one wipe cut where you make people appear or disappear, right, like the two uh, guys and the girl. You're going to have a pop cut where there's motion, <coughs> and you're going to have a pop cut where something appears or disappears. Okay? So your timeline is going to look very, very similar to this. One, two, three, four, five things, right? After each one, and you guys will probably get to shooting and editing on Wednesday, I want you guys to put a little title of who directed and edited that shot and who was the camera person. So if you direct a shot, you need to edit that shot, right? And it's probably best off if you storyboard it and screenplay your shot too. So that way you're kind of in control of the whole thing, right? You screenplay your shot, you storyboard your shot, you direct your shot, you edit your shot, you have someone else camera person act it, obviously. And then each one, there'd be a title after each one of these, right? So you'd have five titles, you know, shrink up, make them beautiful, blah, 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 blah. So you'd have a, you know, I'm making mine a little ugly right now. Something like, something like this. Right there we go. Now we're now we're getting somewhere. Okay, so like that. All right. So after each one, there's a title telling me who did what. All right. So step one is to use the same groups we're using for the note. If you weren't here the other day, I can tell you what group you're in. Um, step one: hop on Celtics on your machines. Create a special cuts folder in your period three, uh, period seven folder and uh, create a screenplay, 
right? So five individual scenes, they don't have to connect, they don't have to make sense, it doesn't have to be a unifying story, it can be just like this, where they make absolutely no sense. Um, so five, five, five scenes in your screenplay, once your screenplay is done, put it on a thumb drive, I can print it out, and then we can start storyboarding, there's white paper right here. Um, spend a good amount of time on your storyboards. I had to turn away a couple people from second and sixth period because their storyboards were unsatisfactory. Um, they had they had the, the shape of the boards like this. I was like, since when? Like, no, 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 no. Or just like just framing off, right? They had the full body and they said it's a medium shot. And I said, okay. Um, so get the storyboards correct, right? Use the techniques I showed you for the whips and the wipes um, on your storyboards, and then. Uh, that's your goal is to get your screenplays and storyboards done today. You have about an hour to bang those out. Then Wednesday we come in, we shoot it in the first 45 minutes, we edit it in the second 45 minutes, and uh, and then what we'll do is in the note we'll get back to the note on Friday, and I'm, you guys, I'm gonna force you guys to use at least one of these in your note video. Um, so again, screenplay and storyboard. Let's get those done today, otherwise they become homework, and we don't want homework, right? Okay, so white paper right here, hop on your machines. If anyone needs to know their group, ask me.